Thank you very much. Well, I, I'm not sure I'm the world's best stunt double for this particular occasion, but I'll do the best I can. So I'm going to be talking about how to treat, whether it's worthwhile prescribing a diet to treat depression. And what I plan to do is talk a little bit about the epidemiology of the, the association between diet and depression, and then talk a little bit about the clinical angles. I don't have to tell you that there's been a massive change in diet over the last few decades. Uh, this is data from The Economist, which of course is still the most reliable single course, uh, source of information in the modern age. And here you can see a dramatic reduction in the UK population in the consumption of fresh green vegetables and a corresponding increase in ready-made meals, chips, crisps, and other assorted junk foods. In Australia, the average teenager gets 50% of their calories from junk and processed foods. This is a remarkable statistic. And we're only just beginning to understand the public health implications of this. If we look at the Global Burden of Disease Study, which I think most of you know, um, in middle and high income countries, diet is now the single largest contributor to the burden of disability in rich countries. Quite remarkable. Not only, and I'm going to convince you that we all understand that this is uh, a risk for diabetes, heart disease, and, and those things, but I'm going to show you some data that this is a risk factor for depression as well. So what's a poor diet? I'm not sure I have to tell you this. Diet that is low in fruit, vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds, fiber, omega-3, and polyunsaturateds. Independent to a poor diet, there's a thing called a, a good diet. There's a poor diet. Uh, and this is a diet that's high in red meat, processed meats, uh, added sugars, sugar-sweetened beverages, trans fats, and sodium. Easy to identify, much harder to do much about. Sorry. The first really good quality study that was done on the relationship between diet and mental health was by Felice. And this was published in the American Journal of Psychiatry. This is data from the Geelong Osteoporosis Study. And she looked at the relationship between diet quality and depression in a very large cohort of women across the, uh, derived, from, uh, uh, derived from the electoral rolls in Australia. This is randomly selected from the population. And what, what Felice found was two things, independent of each other to some extent, that poor quality diet increased your risk of mental health problems, particularly depression, and a good quality diet was protective. Uh, of course, big claims need big evidence and replication. And we now have many, many dozens of studies from all over the globe that have replicated this. These come from Norway, from Sweden, from Japan. They are cross-sectional. And importantly, many of these are now longitudinal. Um, they've looked at the Mediterranean diet. They've looked at the Chinese diet. And the bottom line is whether you're looking at Norwegian, traditional, or any traditional healthy diet, it's protective as against any westernized diet in any of these other populations uh, increases your risk for mental health problems. We're now at the level where we have meta-analytic level of evidence. Uh, and if you, you could break this down in a number of different ways. So the one that most people look at, and again, I, I want to get away from the idea that there's anything magical about the Mediterranean diet that isn't found in a traditional Norwegian diet or a traditional Japanese or Chinese diet. They're all equally good because they're all what they have in common is much greater than, in terms of nutritional terms, than how they differ. But a Mediterranean diet, adherence to Mediterranean diet, is associated with an, about a 30% reduction in the risk for depression in these large population studies. If you look at it another way, get away from the Mediterranean diet and using a thing called a healthy eating index, which is how you weight all the good stuff in your diet as against all the bad stuff in your diet that I showed you earlier, Healthy eating index, the higher your healthy eating index, associated with 35% risk reduction for the development of depression. These are not small odds ratios. Uh, these are clinically meaningful and certainly meaningful at a population level. Another way of conceptualizing diet is a thing called a dietary inflammatory index. So we know that many of the constituents of an unhealthy diet, particularly saturated fat, 
high sugar, high carbohydrate diets, increased measures of systemic inflammation. And so you can look at a person's diet and calculate their so-called dietary inflammatory index. And the dietary inflammatory index is also strongly correlated with depression. If you have a low dietary inflammatory index, you have a 30% reduction in your risk of developing depression.